Are you ready to lose weight and feel better than you've ever felt in your life? I, the Minister of Wellness, am offering an incredible 50% discount code on my Lose 100 Pounds in 100 Days book, which contains the exact meal plan that has helped thousands of our people achieve amazing results. Take advantage before this offer ends by visiting the minister of wellness.com and use the promo code new you 22. Garrett Morgan braced the trail for African American inventors with his patents, including those for hair straightening product, a blazing device, a revamped sewing machine, and an improved traffic signal. With only an elementary school education, Garrett Morgan began his career as a sewing machine mechanic. He went on to patent several inventions, including an improved sewing machine and traffic signal, a hair straightening product, and a respiratory device that would later provide blueprints for the World War I gas masks. Born in Paris, Kentucky on March 4, 1877, Garrett Morgan was the seventh of 11 children. His mother, Elizabeth Reed, was an Indian and African descent and the daughter of a Baptist minister. His father, Sidney, a formerly enslaved person freed in 1863, was the son of John Hart Morgan, a Confederate colonel. Morgan's mixed race heritage would later play a part in his business dealings as an adult. When Morgan was in his mid-teens, he moved to Cincinnati, Ohio to look for work and found it as a handyman to a wealthy landowner. Although he only completed an elementary school education, Morgan was able to pay for more lessons from a private tutor. But jobs at the sewing machine factories were too soon to capture his imagination and determine his future. Learning the inner workings of the machine and how to fix them, Morgan obtained a patent for an improved sewing machine and opened his own repair business. Morgan's business was a success and it enabled him to marry a Bavarian woman named Marianne Hansek and established himself in Cleveland. He and his wife would have three sons during their marriage. Following the momentum of his business success, Morgan's patented sewing machine would soon pave the way to his financial freedom. I built in a rather unorthodox way. In 1909, Morgan was working with sewing machines in his newly opened tailoring shop, a business had had opened that he had opened with his wife Mary, who had experience as a seamstress. When he encountered woolen fabric that had been scorched by a sewing machine needle. It was a common problem that at the time since sewing machine needles ran at such high speeds. In hopes of alleviating the problem, Megan experimented with a chemical solution in an effort to reduce friction created by the needle and subsequently noticed that the hairs of the cloth were straightened. After trying his solution to good effect on neighboring dog fur, Morgan finally tested the cocosion on himself. When that worked, he quickly established the G and A Morgan Hair Refining Company and sold the cream to African Americans. The company was incredibly successful, bringing Morgan financial security and allowing him to pursue other interests. In 1914, Morgan patented a breathing device, or a safety hood, providing its wearers with a safer breathing experience in the presence of smoke, gases, and pollutants. Morgan worked hard to market the device, especially the fire in the fire department, often personally demonstrating its liability in fires. Morgan's breathing device became the prototype and precursor for the gas masks used during World War I protecting soldiers from toxic gases used in warfare. The invasion handed him the first prize at the second international exposure 
of safety and sanitation in New York City. There was some resistance to Morgan's devices among buyers, particularly in the South, where racial tension remained palpable despite advancements in African-American rights. In an effort to concentrate and counteract the resistance of his products, Morgan hired a white actor to pose as the inventor during presentations of his breathing device. Morgan would pose as the inventor's sidekick, disguised as the Native American man named Big Chief Manson, and wearing his hood and areas otherwise unsafe for breathing, the tactic was successful. Sales of the device were brisk, especially from firefighters and rescue workers. In 1916, the city of Cleveland was drilling a new tunnel under Lake Ely for a fresh water supply. Workers hit a pocket of natural gas, which resulted in a huge explosion and trapped workers underground amidst suffocating nervous fins and dusts. When Morgan, about, when Morgan heard about the explosion, he and his brother put on the breathing device, made their way to the tunnel and entered as quickly as possible. The brothers managed to save two lives and recover four bodies before the rescue effort was shut down. Despite his heroic effort, the publicity that Morgan garnered from the incident had sales. The public was now fully aware that Morgan was an African American and many refused to purchase his products. Adding to the detriment, neither the inventor nor his brother were fully recognized for their heroic effort at Lake Erie, possibly another effort of racial discrimination. Morgan was nominated for a Carnegie Medal for his effort, but ultimately wasn't chosen to receive the award. Additionally, some reports of the explosion named others as the rescuers. While the public's lack of acknowledgement for Morgan's and his brother's role at the Cleveland explosion was undoubtedly disheartening, Morgan was a vicious inventor and observer who focused on fixing problems and so soon turned his attention to all kinds of things from hats to belt fasteners to car parts. The first black man in Cleveland to own a car, Morgan worked on his mechanical skills and developed a friction drive crutch. Then in 1923, he created a new kind of traffic signal, one with a warning light to alert drivers that they would need to stop after witnessing a carriage accident at a particular problematic intersection in the city. Morgan quickly acquired patent for his traffic signal, a redundant version of the modern three-way traffic light in the United States, Britain, and Canada, but eventually sold the right to General Electric for 40,000 US dollars. Outside of his invention career, Morgan delegably supported the African-American community throughout his lifetime. He was a member of the new reformed National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, was active in the Cleveland Association of Colored Men, donated to Negro colleges and opened All Black Country Club. Additionally, in 1920, he launched the African-American newspaper, the Cleveland Call, later named the Call and Post. Morgan developed uh, began developing glaucoma in 1943 and lost most of his sight as a result. The accomplished inventor died in Cleveland, Ohio on July 27, 1963, shortly before the celebration of the Emancipation Proclamation Sentinel, an event he had been waiting. Just before his death, Morgan was honored by the U.S. government for his traffic signal invasion and he was eventually restored to his place in history as a hero of the Lake Erie Rescue. Morgan improved and saved countless lives worldwide, including those of firefighters, soldiers, and vehicle operators with his profound invasions. His work provided the blueprint for much important advancement that came later and continued to inspire and serve as basis for research conducted by modern day inventors and engineers. Hey, that is the story for Morgan. Please let me know what you think in the comment section and let me know who do you wish us to cover in the next topic. My name is Osi the Bone Child. I'll be seeing you in another video. But until next time, please just take care of yourself, dear brothers and sisters. Love you all. 
bye bye but don't forget to subscribe colonization never ended in the white supremacist system and as we see today the colonization is in the mind now those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized we're still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind pick up my book seven steps to decolonize the mind and we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy you can pick it up today on amazon.com